So this clip has been going around my circle of internet friends, or at least I think it's this clip. People were telling me that baboons are keeping dogs as pets. So I tracked down the clip and thought I'd give it a look, and let me just say, I'm pretty skeptical. Animals don't generally keep pets, and people like to ascribe a lot of human behavior to animals that doesn't really apply. But I'm the open-minded sort, so let's check it out. Oh, okay, that's really interesting. I can see where people come to that conclusion. In fact, a lot of people get it, especially if you do a bit of research. It isn't hard to find more clips of the baboons in this region. They're called olive baboons, living side by side with feral dogs. And on the surface, that can look like a pet-like relationship, but calling it that is pretty inaccurate. Experts are quick to point out that this baboon is interacting with this puppy the same way it would a young baboon. Baboon children are often kidnapped as a form of establishing dominance over other baboons, but don't mistake this as some form of affection either. The baboon probably doesn't think of the puppy as young, more likely that it's small, furry, and manipulable. So why do people come to the conclusion that baboons were raising pets? Well, it's most likely because the dogs in that area do live alongside baboons, sometimes pretty closely, but this is symbiosis at best, and more likely just proximity tolerance between the two species. To put it simply, as one scientific observer did, the baboons aren't feeding the dogs, are they? They actually share food sources, namely human beings. Well, not eating them, but being fed by them. So yeah, that's not nearly as cute as people think it is, very similar to another clip we examined of a baboon kidnapping a lion cub, but not exactly. See, the root of that behavior comes from predator elimination. Baboons kill lion cubs to stop them from competing for food. Baboons play with dogs for their own entertainment and, as far as I know, don't get in the habit of killing them, which is a small spot of sunshine in the dark world of animal infanticide. And as some of you may already know, that applies to both inside of a species as well as between species. For example, because of course I have an example, hyenas. Hyenas are social animals that live in clans and, as with many social species, have a social hierarchy. And to keep their place in that social hierarchy, higher-ranking female hyenas will take cubs from lower-ranking hyenas and crush their skulls. Apparently, the greater the amount of female offspring in a clan, the better, because once they've grown into mature adults, they will support their mother. So having the hyena in power kill the offspring of other hyenas prevents them from rising up to challenge her position. This is similar to other forms of infanticide we see in nature, but on a much more political and long-term scale, and less about the direct opportunity opportunity. However, some forms of animal kidnapping and infanticide can be driven by completely different circumstances, including a ransom demand. If you asked me before I researched this topic, I wouldn't have believed that animals were capable of demanding ransom. But it turns out that otters have figured it out. Yes, those otters. I know, these seem cute, cuddly, and innocent, but they have a real mean streak in them. In times where food is scarce, male otters will kidnap and hold otter pups ransom until the pup's mother gives them an adequate amount of food. As heinous as that is, at least there's a happy ending for the other pup. Male otters are not as kind to the young of other species. Male otters have been frequently known to kidnap and rape baby seals. And while this is unfortunate on its own, the otter mounting process involves holding the seal underwater for well over an hour. So when this happens, the baby seal dies. Mating with the seal corpse for an extended period after the fact has also been known to happen. I'm talking for a period of weeks, so yeah. Saying that is fairly unpleasant is a bit of an understatement. Admittedly, this is kind of a rough subject, and we don't have much in the way of palate cleansers, but I have a couple of nice stories I can share before we head back into rough waters. A dolphin born with a spinal deformity, possibly abandoned by its own pod because of the difficulties it would have swimming with the rest of them, was adopted by another pod. Not a pod of dolphins, mind you, but of sperm whales. Witnessed by baffled researchers was a pod of whales behaving as if this dolphin was one of their own, accepting affection from it and everything. Even more interestingly is that this type of relationship between these two species, rare as it is, doesn't appear to be one-sided. Dolphins are known for kidnapping the young of others to mother them, but on a temporary basis. A female lion living in a nature preserve was seen nurturing a baby oryx, the children of one of its primary food species. This means the lion was ignoring some powerful drives in order to satiate some other need. Observers speculate that this lion without pride or cubs probably suffered from some sort of 
recent traumatic loss, much like with people who suffer emotional trauma, sometimes relationships in the brain become muddled and confusing, so the lion was driven to nurture the young oryx rather than eat it. As this relationship stretched on for days, much longer than anyone expected, the behavior of the lioness became trouble. She kept the oryx near as if it were her young but continued to hunt as normal. The problem? When the little oryx, desperately in need of its own mother's milk, would see other oryx, it would try and rejoin the herd. The other oryx would run away because behind the baby was this lion who was certainly going to eat it. And the lion couldn't get a kill because the baby oryx would alert all of its prey. Both of them were starving. But the female lion's drive to keep the baby was so strong that it fought the urge to eat at all, not just its adoptive offspring. I wish I could tell you this story has a happy ending, but it doesn't, unfortunately. The lion was also hesitant to drink water since the watering areas are where predatory ambushes are most common. But after days, she was forced to relent, bringing the baby oryx to the river. After looking away for just a moment, the young oryx was caught and eaten by a powerful male lion, one that the female couldn't hope to overpower. The lioness was left mourning by the riverbank quite visibly distressed. An interesting additional note is that soon after she killed and ate for the first time in a few days. So it was known that her appetite wasn't affected and she was actively choosing not to eat the baby oryx. After that, the lioness actually adopted more oryx calves, but all of them met similar fates. She's driven to raise these children as her own, but completely unequipped to be the type of mother they need. And though we may speculate on the reason she behaves this way, we have no way of trying to help her break this tragic cycle. So, after that real bummer, I was wondering if you guys have any stories of positive animal adoption, or maybe just some funny animal kidnapping anecdotes. Seriously, I'm not picky. Heck, if you think you have more depressing animal facts, then I'm open to hearing that too, if begrudgingly. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos about the cruel and callous animal kingdom, and some cute cat videos if I find the time.